I ain't gonna lie, it's cold out here. But there isn't anything more cold than fitting distributions from data and then making an interpretation from it, if you know what I'm saying. So I'm gonna step through that today and hopefully by the end of this, you'll have a good idea of what I'm talking about. In petroleum engineering, there are many cases where we don't have enough data to make an interpretation. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make an interpretation using Monte Carlo simulation to predict EUR using the reciprocal rate cumulative production interpretation. So in the previous videos, we've seen this before. We essentially used our mathematical model to segregate linear flow from boundary dominated flow. You can see here, this is a uh, well that displays that trend. We see a linear fit of our linear flow region and then it curves when we go to boundary dominated. There are going to be cases where you don't have enough data. For example, this well right here, um, it just hasn't produced long enough to make that turn yet. So how do we make an interpretation from this well? Well, we have to fit distributions to, to data. And uh, for our case, um, we're interested in getting B boundary dominated and the time to end of linear flow, getting data from different wells in this area, and then mathematically modeling those with distributions, and then ultimately using that to run Monte Carlo simulation to predict EUR. So I'm going to show how to do that today. Um, so I went and did an analysis on several wells in the area as they would get 48 data points. So these are histograms of our B boundary dominated values and our time to the end of linear flow values, the 48 wells. And so what we're going to do with this is we're going to um, basically apply the template we did in the past by using our probability plots to um, fit a mathematical model. Uh, it could be normal distribution, uniform, long normal, weeble, whatever it is. We want to um, mathematically model it with one of those distributions as shown here and um, pick the, the best one for each case and then uh, once we do that we have a mathematical model that we can apply to um, Monte Carlo simulation. So um, you can see here, here's the Weeble distribution. Actually this is the log normal distribution and this is the uniform probability distribution. So once we have distributions of our random variables we can then apply Monte Carlo simulation as shown here and we've seen this before essentially what we're doing is we have our mathematical model of our random variables in this case it's going to be our B boundary dominated and the time to end of linear flow and then we're going to do, use a random number generator to generate values between 0 and 1 for several different cases and we're going to iterate and plug it into our model that calculates EUR and then we will eventually get a several cases and we'll fit a probability plot to that and then determine our P10, P50, and P90. So that was a lot of information in a short amount of time. I don't expect you to know this um, at the right now, but we're going to go ahead and step into Excel and hopefully you'll get a grasp of what I'm doing here. It's a really cool process to go through and you can apply this method not only in petroleum engineering but to uh, mechanical engineering problems as well and any type of engineering problem. So just focus on the concept. So let's step into it. So this was the data collected on wells in the area that this well came from that we're doing an interpretation on. You can see I've got um, 48 data points for B boundary dominated and time to the end of linear flow. Uh, we can use this now, this data, to fit a distribution to it. So let's start with B boundary dominated. And um, so this is the template we've used in the past. It's got our probability plots for um, Weeble exponential, log normal, normal, uniform. So let's go ahead and see how our B boundary dominated values, how they can be modeled. So um, I pasted those values in there and then I'm putting the number of samples obtained. And these are already sorted from smallest to largest. So FYI, just remember to do, to do that. And you can see here we have um, 
our probability plot our best fit line through it and the uniform distribution does a fabulous job um, we can see this histogram right here it's you know it, it, you could consider it uniform um, the R squared values approaching one which is fantastic uh, the only problem with this is um, it does produce negative B values um, the intercept is negative so um, that's not really realistic uh, for B boundary dominated values they're always greater than zero um, so just FYI keep you know this you gotta think <laughs> about this you can't just roll with the number um, the normal distribution that does a good job as well um, and then uh, we can compare it to our log normal which is not a great fit the exponential is, is pretty sorry and then the Weevil distribution is all right. Um, the advantage of uh, the Weevil exponential and log normal is the values will always be positive because of this natural log of x here. So um, just keep that in the back of your mind too. Um, whereas the normal and the uniform, you can get negative values. And uh, so. Um, We've done our B boundary dominated. We do the same process for our time to the end of linear flow. So I'm going to copy these values, paste them in here, and um, put in our sample numbers. And you can see this template's pretty fast now that we have it set up. Um, we can fly through this so we can make an interpretation on the time to end of linear flow um, the uniform distribution um, decent fit uh, the R squared value is pretty low the normal is this is also the same here um, the log normal did a great job you can see the R squared value is 0.9693 and the straight line fits through a majority of the data points the exponential is good as well, but really this is <laughs> the time to end linear flow is not really exponential. Um, so just be aware of that. And you can see um, the Weevil distribution does the best job over here. Um, it's a good fit and our R squared value right here is uh, 0.9786, which is the highest of all the distributions. Okay. so. Now we fit distributions to the data that we need. So now we can go set up our Monte Carlo analysis. So how do we do that? Essentially, I'm going to delete these values so I can show you guys how to do this. Um, this is our well we're trying to make an interpretation on. So we have our constant variables here, our straight line interpretation. We were able to determine our slope and our intercept, which we need to calculate EUR. But we also need B boundary dominated and the time to the end of linear flow. So we don't have these values here. And you can see um, the solver was confused. <laughs> this black line right here, it was not able to make a good interpretation because you didn't really see a change from boundary dominated from linear flow to boundary dominated. So um, what we have here is these are random variables, and we're going to run uh, several cases here um, with our distributions. So let's go ahead and. Um, go back to our B boundary dominated um, I'm gonna use the Weeble distribution in this case because it's the R squared value is pretty decent and um, I know all the values will be positive so I'm gonna copy the shape and scale parameter and we're gonna go back to Monte Carlo paste that in here paste the values and then for a time to the end of linear flow I'm also going to use the Weeble distribution um, copy these over okay so we have our values in there 
and uh, I'm just going to expand this out just a little bit um, so that it's not rounded. So now um, let's go ahead and run our cases. Um, so we're going to apply our uh, inverse function for the Weeble distribution, which I've shown in a previous video. It's called Weeble inverse. It's just going to take our shape parameter and our scale parameter. In this case, um, this will be our shape and our scale. So A is our scale and B is our shape. So there's our <coughs> A value, here's our B value, and then our we're going to put in our probability, our random function, ran function. And it's going to give us a value between, uh, the ran function is going to give us a value between 0 and 1. And we're going to do the same thing for our time to end the linear flow. So it takes those values. I want to freeze these constants right here. And I want to keep our RAND function uh, generating values there. And then I'm going to copy this down. We're just going to run 50 cases. Having trouble with my mouse here, but um, you get the point. And so now we have um, all the variables we need to calculate EUR. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I wrote a VBA function for that. It's called EUR underscore TELF. And I'll go explain that code here in a second. I'm just going to take our slope. I'm going to freeze that because we only have one value. Our reciprocal rate intercept. And then our time to end of linear flow. B boundary dominated and this is the economic rate um, I'm just gonna call it 30 for now I'd have to get that value from my economic spreadsheet but we're just gonna call it 30 and then I carry this all the way down and I get a bunch of EUR values so we ran 50 cases now what I want to do I want to copy these and I want to paste these the values in this column so we can determine our P10, P50, and P90. And you can see um, we got to rearrange these from uh, smallest to largest. So let's go to the data tab and do that. Uh, continue with current selection. And right here um, we have our data points, our cases, and we fit a straight line through the data points. And you can see here that um, we can look at the R squared value and visually see the fit. Uh, the uniform distribution didn't do so hot. Um, the normal plot, normal distribution plots, not too great, but um, the log normal is looking pretty good 0.9383. And then also the exponential, but that's not really applicable to this. We don't have a. a uh, exponential uh, distribution and then our Weeble plot did a decent job as well so you can see here um, right now it looks like uh, log normal is going to be the winner and um, this is actually change this to EUR um, that's a great fit um, and you can see um, I'm gonna go with the log normal in this case uh, but this requires engineering judgment and um, uh, a little more thought than what I'm showing you here, but um, I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, log normal is the best one in this case, and then um, we can get our P10, P50, and P90 values here. Um, in the worst case, we're producing 75,000 barrels over the life of the well. Uh, the most likely case, 170,000, and then the best case, 
383,000. So that's how you would do this type of interpretation. Um, and uh, so next I'm going to go step into the code here on how this EUR was calculated so that you have a general idea. If you want to do this, uh, you can. Um, so let's step into the code. So this was the main function we applied today, our EUR determination. It takes in five values, our slope, our intercept, our time to the end of linear flow, our B boundary dominated, and our economic limit rate. So um, it basically just, um, it's what we did um, in this spreadsheet right here. Um, we basically forecasted EUR by separating the linear flow region from the boundary dominated region and we ended up um, essentially adding the two values together our net production to the end of linear flow and our net production from the boundary dominated region um, that's exactly what this function is doing it's just doing it in one step um, so it takes applies the same equations we we've, we've been using um, and I'm kind of bouncing around here but um, I think it's important to, to see the connection. So um, we calculate our initial decline rate in the uh, linear flow region using this equation and then we determine our initial decline rate at the beginning of boundary dominated flow and uh, then this, this is an important part right here um, we determine the net produced oil to the Indian linear flow which is represented by um, this blue triangle right here and we actually use um, this equation up here um, right here it's a quadratic function uh, we just move the time to end of linear flow to the right and it, it's actually a uh, parabola, right? Um, and what it is, it's a parabola that falls. Uh, the, the intercept is a negative value because our time to the linear, end of linear flow is negative. When you move it over, it's, it's uh, going to be a parabola. And um, it's going to give you two roots. It's going to cross the x-axis at two values. Um, you're going to want to take the positive root, and so this is um, what it does. Uh, it just uses stuff you learned in high school, right? Uh, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, except we're taking the positive root, so we're, we're just using the um, negative b plus if you understand what that means um, so and then we go ahead and uh, we continue to uh, calculate our initial rate at the beginning of boundary dominated flow and then um, we use our ARPS equation cumulative production which you've seen before and then we add the two values together to get our EUR so it's it's really um, what we did and exactly what we did here it's just condensed down and uh, using this uh, quadratic function to determine um, our net production to the end of linear flow which which is this value right here that solver gave us um, so you know I wanted to give you some background into that uh, so that you don't think this is like black magic that's the last thing I want to do is is, is um, give you all bad information um, you know and you're free to try it on your own for sure. So I hope you guys learned something from this and I'll see you next time. Adios.